Hi, I live on 123 Acme Street and my neighbor's house is possessed by demons. 123 Acme Street? Your neighbor's house is what now? It's possessed by demons. I can hear growling and screaming and the lights are flashing all sorts of colors and I think there's someone in danger. I hear gunfire. Oh, um... Ma'am, is your neighbor playing Resident Evil 2 Remake in virtual reality while accidentally syncing all their house's smart lights to the game's output by any chance? I don't know what any of that means! Ew! Ew! That is great! You guys are sick in the head! I love you! Ah! Ah! Fucking bullshit! Oh shit! Ignore him, ignore him! Ma'am, all you need to know is that you're safe. Oh, thank the Lord! I was just afraid my neighbor's house was possessed! Only virtually, ma'am. Only virtually. Okay, well, thank you, and God bless technology! Oh! Holy shit, that was fucking crazy! Well, I hope my neighbors don't think my house is possessed by demons or something. But one thing's for sure is Resident Evil 2 Remake is officially a PC VR game. What the fuck was that lightning? Ooh, Holy shit, my house is actually possessed by demons! Cool! Welcome to Stereo 3D Productions, folks. Today it's time to finally bust open the massive case that is Resident Evil 2 Remake in virtual reality, which, as massive as it is, is only a small fragment of our newfound RE Engine PC VR support saga, all thanks to the one and only Preydog RE framework. That's right, after having experimented with Resident Evil 7 in PC VR for years, starting with the early Vorpex support, playing seated with mouse and keyboard, going all the way into full-blown RE framework VR support with motion controls and room scale tracking, I finally moved on to Resident Evil 2 Remake to see how far the RE framework VR retrofits can extend to. While RE7 had always been a challenging setup in the days of Vorpex, with Capcom regularly breaking the mods and players having to make giant compromises for performance, it would seem at a first glance that RE2 would be an even trickier beast to conquer. Here we have a game that's most definitely not built partly for VR like the seventh installment was. RE2 is mainly a third-person game full of forced camera motion and potentially VR jarring mechanics. Is it true that RE Framework can retrofit this baby to the point of mistaking it for a first-party VR game? Well, if that's all you want to know, the answer is... Not only do we have a near-perfect retrofit with motion control support, full room scale tracking, a tracked body model, far from the best one but still impressive to see, but we can even play the game in third-person seated mode, similar to the way you'd play first-party third-person VR games like Hellblade VR. This mod's retrofit is definitely not as extensive and polished as the Half-Life 2 VR mod we just took a dive into, but all things considered, when compared to the PSVR Resident Evil counterparts, this definitely jumps above that bar easily. Yes, thanks to Preydog's RE framework, Resident Evil 2 Remake is now officially a PC VR game. Through this video, we're going to look at how to set up the mod, how to improve the experience for first-person gameplay, which is mainly how I'd recommend playing the entire game, and we'll also take a look at the third-person mode, which frankly is a nice alternative to have and delivers a similar amount of horror at a fraction of the physical movement. Before I even start getting into this, I need to stress how good the first-person adaptation is. Several times while recording gameplay for this video and while researching the setup as much as I could, I would find myself completely forgetting not only the fact that this game isn't originally designed for virtual reality, but also found myself completely forgetting that this is a native third-person game. Most of the interactions felt natural, and while we don't have the fancy manual gun reloading and not too many environment interactions, it still felt like a game that was competently ported to VR by the studio themselves and not a third-party post-release modification. This is some great quality VR, and I'm going to show you how to get it all set up. 
Running RE Engine Resident Evil games had been a long-running challenge for years, but in late 2019, the RE framework and its VR enabling mod made its way onto the internet and busted open the floodgates for not only Resident Evil 7, a game that had up to this point some decent ways of being run in PC VR using Vorpex, but also unleashed the VR fury on Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes, Resident Evil 8, Monster Hunter Rise, and Devil May Cry 5. At this point, any new game released on RE Engine had good odds of being compatible with this mod, which in turn means we're likely to get some form of VR adaptation for it. Go figure, Resident Evil 4 Remake Demo dropped, and thanks to this framework, the game already had third-person VR support. For any RE Engine game you want to run, the setup is almost the same, and we'll show you how to do it for Resident Evil 2 Remake. Now there's a catch with this specific game. A catch that also applies to Resident Evil 3 Remake and Resident Evil 7. We're going to have to revert the game to its original DirectX 11 state. Yes, there are newer mods created for the DX12 variants of the games with ray tracing support, but those are right now not matured enough in comparison to their well-established DirectX 11 counterparts. Plus, just based on the performance difference between the two, it's just plain common sense to stick to the DX11 versions. To revert Resident Evil 2 Remake to its original DX11 release, right-click the game on Steam and go Properties. Then click on the Betas tab. Under the Select the Beta you would like to opt into dropdown, pick the DX11 Non-RT Entry. Now before you close out of this window, let's go back to the General tab one second. Make sure to disable that cancerous Use Desktop Game Theater when Steam VR is active option so Steam doesn't sabotage your attempt at running in VR later. You can close this window once you've done that. It's possible that your game will update at this point in order to revert to the DirectX 11 version. Once your game finishes updating, it's time to download our copy of the mod. Side note, if you want to try the game with DirectX 12, you can, but there are good odds the VR support won't be as good, with the game itself just not running as well either, and the additional smooth locomotion mod I'm going to demonstrate later won't be compatible. The choice is up to you. There's going to be a link in the description to the main RE framework release branch, but I'll also include the link to the nightly builds branch. I normally stick to the main branch, but sometimes with games that have just released, like Resident Evil 4 Remake Demo, it may be worth checking into the nightly builds link to get access to unreleased features. Whichever link you choose, the process is the same. For the DirectX 11 variant, download the file re2-tdb66.zip and save it somewhere. If you're being brave and sticking to DirectX 12, get the re2.zip file instead. The process for both will be the same in terms of installation. Extract the contents of the zip file into a folder. While RE2 is not running, copy all these extracted files into the root of the game's folder. You can find the game's root folder by right-clicking it on Steam, then going to Manage, and then click Browse Local Files. This will open a window to your game's root. Paste the mods files over there. If you have an Oculus kit or any other kit that can bypass Steam VR and use OpenXR directly, you'll want to delete the file openvr-api.dll, which will let OpenXR take over. Just keep in mind, if you're doing this with Oculus, your Oculus app should be set as the main OpenXR runtime. For my Valve Index, I only use the OpenVR variant, but with Oculus Quest, I actually switched between the two a few times and found the game does perform slightly better over OpenXR for the simple fact that it doesn't need to use Steam VR as a middleman. If you kept a copy of your extracted mod files, you can recopy and redelete the openvr underscore api.dll file at will whenever you want if you need to experiment. OpenVR can in fact come in handy all the time since the in-game RE framework VR game menu doesn't work with OpenXR and you might want that menu if you're planning on messing with the mod settings a lot and in our case there is one really useful feature we'll use with SteamVR controller bindings that you might be interested in so we can't really write off OpenVR despite using SteamVR as a middleman with Oculus it has become the go-to way to play here. 
At this point, your Resident Evil 2 Remake is now set for VR. You can launch your runtimes, be it Steam VR or Oculus Home, and launch Resident Evil 2 Remake, which will show up on your desktop for a few seconds before finally switching over into your VR headset as the starting sequence of logos play out. If you take off your headset, this will make the mod pause the VR and revert to 2D. So make sure you keep your headset on as the game launches the first time, just so you can see that it's running correctly. Now, before we move on to graphics, I have to describe how the RE framework menu works because we're going to use it a few times and yes, it needs to be said, this menu likes to misbehave a lot. So I'm going to show you two ways to use it. The main way to use it in VR involves pointing at your left palm with your right controller as if you were aiming a laser pointer. Now, take care not to have your hands too far apart when you do this, about one foot is best. And when the menu comes up, gently tap your right trigger to bring up the ray. You can click the categories to expand the settings and scroll using the right stick. And now I do have to point out all the possible problems that can happen when you do all this sequence. First, the menu will often refuse to come up for some random moments. I have found myself having to sometimes restart the game in order for it to work normally again. Something that once happened to me five times in a row while recording the RE2 B-roll series. It's really random and it can get very annoying. Another painful thing that happens is while trying to scroll, you'll end up scrolling sideways and kind of losing control of the view on the menu. Furthermore, sometimes you can accidentally resize the menu while scrolling through it, making it into a small window that you can't use anymore. Last but not least, if you're using OpenXR, it seems this in-game menu is not working at all at the moment. Needless to say, it's been a struggle to use this thing, and that's where my friend Einkrow from Einkrow Productions Co., link in the description, finally showed me an alternative. When you remove your headset while this game is running in VR, it should shortly revert to 2D, at which point you can use the very same menu on your screen using your mouse and keyboard. Yes, this requires you to interrupt your session for settings changes, but I have to say, this is so much more reliable. I'll be showing you a controls binding that includes a macro to change from third person to first person later. The only action we absolutely need to perform quickly in game. So fortunately, we won't need this menu often enough for this thing to become a problem. Just pop that headset off, wait for the game to revert to 2D. This won't work if you've put tape over your headset's light sensor like I often do, by the way and then press your insert key on your keyboard, which should bring up the RE framework menu on the screen. At this point, you can use the entire thing normally with your mouse and even set yourself a hotkey for recenter view and things like that. If you're following along with this video, you should be able to get yourself set up just once through this method and not have to worry about the menu again. It's a pretty good fallback method and for the numeric inputs, it's actually proven necessary, so it's nice to have this method. Now that we're familiar with this menu, when I refer to it, just feel free to use either method you want to set the options along with what's shown here. Before we get to the game modes, however, we have to cover those graphics settings, so let's go ahead and crack open those game settings. Now you noticed I recommended the DirectX 11 version of this game, and there's a reason for this. I had my first taste of an RE Engine game on DirectX 12 recently when I ran Resident Evil 4 Remake Demo for my second channel, and honestly, I have to make so many more compromises to get decent performance out of it that I just ended up wishing it had a DirectX 11 variant. The same is likely true for all RE Engine Resident Evil games, and so in addition to recommending DirectX 11, all my instructions will be specific to it. If you're on DirectX 12, when it comes to the in-game graphics settings, you're mostly on your own. Let's go right into the game options and directly to the graphics category. First thing to keep in mind is that the resolution shown here won't have any effect on the game other than changing the window size if you're running in windowed mode. So if you want to, for some reason, change the window size, do mess with this option, but it won't affect the performance of the game at all. The next super important thing to keep in mind is you must leave image quality at 100% at all times. I cannot stress this enough. If you want to increase or reduce the resolution, I will show you how to, but while image quality will give you a visual impact, it is highly inefficient. Leaving it at 100% effectively disables it. 
As for the graphics options, they're entirely up to you. If you have anything under the equivalent of an RTX 2070, you're going to want to set almost everything at the lowest, especially if you're on a second or third gen kit like the Valve Index or the Oculus Quest Pro. Even on a system with a mere GTX 1080, you can still scale this game enough to run and look decent. First gen kits like Oculus Rift and the original HTC Vive should be less demanding too. There's a few options you'll want to turn off though, as they don't work correctly in VR. Screen space reflections are really messed up in VR right now, you should turn those off. Motion blur is something you just don't want. And finally, make sure to kill off both lens distortion and film grain because those effects tend to be jarring as all hell in VR. To change the game's resolution, it's simple. Don't use the settings menu. With SteamVR, just open the SteamVR settings and go to the video tab. Personally, I just set resolution scale to custom from here and use the general slider to change the value. You can very well just select Resident Evil 2 from the drop down above here and set it specifically for the game. I set mine to 96% with the index only because I wanted my VR mirror window, the window I used to capture the actual gameplay, to run as smooth as possible alongside the game. With Oculus Runtime, simply open the Oculus Debug tool, I'll link the typical path to that app in the description, and in that window, you can use the pixels per display pixel override. Enter a multiplier value, less than 1 to reduce the resolution, for example 0.95 to run at 95% of your headset's resolution, and 1.05 to run at 105% of your headset's resolution. This is the setting that will have the most impact when trying to aim for good performance. It's possible that you'll have to go much lower if you're running a second generation VR headset on a system with an older GPU like a GTX 1080, but again, with the right compromise, you'll end up with a fairly good result that visually clobbers any of the PlayStation VR versions of Resident Evil. Now, when I say I'm getting good performance, I have just one expectation, really. If the game hits half rate, we're good. What's half rate? Well, it's when the game's frame rate is able to run at exactly half of your headset's refresh rate. With the Valve Index, for example, I've easily had this game run at a constant 60 frames per second with the headset at 120 hertz. And with the Quest 2, I had it even easier as the game was only required to clock a constant 45 for the experience to be smooth, something RE2 accomplishes easily for me. See, when your game is running at exactly half rate, either the asynchronous reprojection of your runtimes will kick in, or if you've got it enabled, the motion interpolation is going to fill every other frame. The beauty of these processes is that the result is a silky smooth output that feels like it's running at twice the frame rate it actually is. Now, I'm personally not a fan of motion smoothing on Steam VR, even less of a fan of a synchronous space warp on Oculus. That effect is absolutely god awful garbage that is not meant for public consumption. Thank god you can disable that trash in the Oculus debug tool I showed you earlier. I prefer to rely on the reprojection alone, which on its own really gives that smooth, full rate feeling without messing up the image. The bottom line is, regardless whether you keep smoothing or space warp on or off, the runtimes really do the magic here, allowing a mere desktop worthy frame rate to feel like a nice smooth VR worthy experience. If you've got a performance meter, like FPS VR, just look up at the frame rate. As long as you're hitting at least half the refresh rate of your headset, you should be smooth sailing. Another stat you can check out specifically in FPS VR is reprojection ratio. Anything at or below 50% is excellent. Before we dive into Resident Evil 2 Remake in first person, I want you to close out of the game. That's right, quit it, leave, close. I mean it, this might seem annoying, but you're going to thank yourselves for doing it later. See, the movement in this game has this really strange sway to it, and when you play in first person, this weirdness is directly transferred to the camera. It's not nauseating per se, but it's actually quite jarring, and it can sometimes even disorient the player. 
Good thing is, there's a mod specifically made to resolve this problem. We're going to use Fluffy Manager 5000 in order to install the Smooth Locomotion mod for Resident Evil 2 Remake. There are links in the description to both Fluffy Mod Manager and the Smooth Locomotion mod. First, download and run Fluffy Mod Manager. You're going to want to set it to manage Resident Evil 2 Remake. Then download the Smooth Locomotion mod, which comes in the form of a RAR file. Drag and drop this RAR file onto Fluffy 5000, at which point it will be added in its library. Finally, activate the checkbox next to the Smooth Locomotion mod entry in Fluffy 5000, and that should install everything automatically. Great, now that we have the Smooth Locomotion mod, and this is the only one we'll need here, it's time to dive into Resident Evil 2 Remake. Go ahead and launch the game, we're going in for the long run. Now when you launch in, don't jump into a new game just yet, we have to go over a few settings changes. I'm using the in-game menu for this, but feel free to switch over to your screen to do this. First, we're going to expand first person in the RE framework menu, and then we're going to check enable. But listen carefully, we're not going to check enable in cutscenes, because trust me, I've tried that a few times and oh boy, is it not up to snuff. First off, depending on who you're playing, when Leon or Claire are present in a cutscene, your camera will attach directly to their head and you will feel every slightest bit of the character's movement, including orientation movement, and this is just way too hardcore, even for me. Worse even, when Claire or Leon are not present in a cutscene, depending on who you're playing as, the camera will revert to a sort of default position that's likely completely out of bounds and not oriented correctly. I found this out at the very beginning of the game when my camera was placed well away from the scene while I found myself standing under what I am certain is a Resident Evil 2 version of Sideshow Bob with the dreads and all. He's just missing the knife. Yes, Sideshow Bob is hiding in RE2 Remake, it seems. Okay, so you get it. Our cutscenes are going to remain third person so they can function correctly. We can't get too picky here. This game just wasn't built for VR at all, and we're already getting a great deal despite this. The cool thing is the cutscenes are actually quite good to experience, put aside some interesting jankies. But before we go experience our first one, we have one more option to toggle. Expand the VR category in the RE framework menu and enable decoupled camera pitch. This option is pretty important since without activating it, cutscenes will straight up force your camera to look up or down, and this can be extremely jarring, disorientating, and can eventually lead to motion sickness when you're actually standing and looking straight and level, and the game shows you views that are rotated up or down. This option makes sure that the only thing in control of your camera's up and down rotation is you. Yes, this does create a new problem, but it's very minor in comparison. This game likes to use jump cuts in the scenes, and with decoupled pitch, it'll sometimes take you a second to realize the action is either above or below you because the camera is always matching your head's orientation. Just keep in mind, if you don't see the action directly in front of you after a jump cut in the cutscene, look either up or down. You will never have to look left or right, the action is always in your horizontal center, in front, above or below. Despite this, it's a lot better playing decoupled because it makes the whole experience infinitely more comfortable on the long run. Now, by default, this mod has two control flaws. First, you can't change map floors, and second, there's no way to quickly switch between first and third person without using the RE framework menu. So if you're on OpenVR through SteamVR, there's an additional step we can take here. We're going to look up community controller bindings. Open your SteamVR settings menu and go to controllers. Then click on manage controller bindings. Since Resident Evil 2 is currently running, it should be pre-selected. Set the controller binding to custom and click on choose another. Then in the selection window, pick RE2R. For Oculus kits, the profile you want should be at the very top of the list. That's the one I've got selected and it has keybinds for changing map floors and toggling third person view. 
On the index, it's another story. I really wasn't compelled to use any of these as they rely on these god-awful trackpads. However, if you're looking for a profile that will add you the ability to toggle first and third person, it seems that the RE2 VR Index Knuckles profile may have you covered. With that one, the upper end of the right trackpad will toggle first and third person, and the left trackpad will act as a D-pad for weapon switching and floor switching in maps. You're on your own with those. With the Index, I personally preferred keeping the stock setup, and I'm using the in-game RE framework menu to toggle third and first person. One last thing I recommend doing in the VR category of the RE framework menu is hitting the reset standing origin button before we play if you're using OpenVR through SteamVR. And with Oculus over OpenXR, we can go through the Oculus option itself by hitting the Oculus or Meta button on the right controller and using the built-in reset view option. Doing either method will make sure our play space center is where we're standing before we get started. We're going to need to reset our standing origin later on to address a movement drift issue in menus, so keep that in mind. Now, go ahead and start your new game. Before we get to those controls, I want you to go ahead and enjoy those opening cutscenes, which should be quite comfortable with decoupled camera pitch. The scene gives you a really good idea of what's to come in terms of graphics. Even the very opening shot with the hamburger will make you go, wow! It's a really impressive display of why I think RE Engine games should all come with VR directly built into them. This is also where you'll see what kind of jank we're going to run into with cutscenes. See, because these cinematics are meant for a narrow field of view on a monitor, whatever isn't directly in view is simply not rendered. So you'll often find yourself seeing the truck driver missing, or some elements of the scene just not being animated. Later on during the car ride with Claire, this becomes even more pronounced, with Claire and Leon taking frequent turns at pulling a Houdini. We can't really get around this, since like I said, this game wasn't designed for VR, but I'll be honest with you, my enjoyment factor for these cutscenes was not hindered one single bit by this. Most of the cinematics in this game adapt for VR quite well and are still an impressive, fun show, despite the obvious jank. Now when you make it to the gas station, take the time to get familiar with your controls. And this is one big piece of criticism I can fire off at the RE framework developers. Please, for the love of God, put a list of VR control inputs in the RE framework menu. When I started off using this mod for Resident Evil 7, it took me quite some time to finally list all the control inputs I needed. And honestly, I had to dig far and wide for them, much further than one should. I was at least hoping to find a list on the mod's GitHub, but no, I found them in bits and pieces and signed random Reddit conversations. Okay, complaints aside, here goes, this is the stock list of controls, put aside the bindings we added later. On the index, it's right stick to rotate, left stick to move, press right stick to sprint, left A is usually cancel, left B for the inventory map and menu, left trigger and left stick to change weapons, up, down, left or right, four slots, left grip to enable melee, right A to confirm, right B to reload, right grip to aim, right trigger to fire, on the Oculus kits, everything is almost identical, but left X is for cancel and left Y is for the inventory map and menu. Now, earlier, when we picked the controller binding for RE2 and SteamVR, we added two functionalities that should be available for either kit. First, on Oculus, double pressing our left stick will toggle first person and third person. On Index, it should be pressing the upper end of your right trackpad. This will come in handy later as there's an issue we work around by quickly toggling this mode. Next, on Oculus, double pressing your right stick with a multi-floor map open will change map floors, while the index profile seems to use the left trackpad as a d-pad for the same purpose. If you're still stuck without a way to change map floors, by the way, you can just reach over to that keyboard and hit the up-down arrows. Okay, I can't go forward here without addressing the obvious. Yes, on one hand, it's really cool that we get a fully tracked body model, 
But I'll be honest, this being a retrofit and not a first party implementation of inverse kinematics, this is far from the best body model I've ever seen, and sadly, I haven't found a single way to completely disable it. RE framework doesn't offer us the options like RE7 has, and the other methods I've tried to solve this problem were simply a complete bust, including my attempt at installing a hands model only mod for Leon that was recommended in the Flat2VR Discord RE announcements category, which turned into a complete catastrophe. The mod did not work correctly at all, resulting in the game jamming and crashing, not to mention making the entire body model completely invisible, arms included. The problem for me mainly lies with Leon's default body model. See, the way they remove the head off the body model for first person gameplay is the mod shrinks the head and implodes it, which gets it out of the way, leaving place for the in-game camera to function correctly in first person. The problem is when shrinking the head, it tends to cause some freaky shit with the hair as large pixelated strands will be protruding from your neck and right in the middle of your view. It's a really terrible, annoying feeling and I finally found a way to get rid of this. While trying to install the VR hands mod that didn't work, I incidentally purchased the Leon Noir costume DLC, which appeared to be required for the VR hands mod to work. Well, while my purchase did not help the situation with the VR hands mod at all, there was a silver lining after all. This costume's body model is 10 times less invasive, and it doesn't come with the hair strand poking you between the eyes constantly. It's a much lighter feeling body, and while it's far, far, far from... P p what is it even doing here? Wow! I swear it's actually a lot better to play with than the default Leon body model. So we've got the RE framework working, got our smooth locomotion mod all set, our VR options are go, we set ourselves up a trustworthy controller binding, and we had a chance to figure out what the control inputs were, and we even dealt with Leon's massive body model with palm tree leaves poking us in the eyes, we're done! It's time to start playing Resident Evil 2 Remake in some fucking amazing virtual reality. There's just two more heads up I need to give you. First heads up is about the puzzles and menus. You'll notice that when playing in first person mode, pressing your movement keys with a menu or a puzzle screen open will cause your position to shift. This issue becomes more pronounced the further you are from your original play space center. An easy solution to mitigate this is just before opening a puzzle or menu, return to your play center and use either the RE framework menu's set standing origin button under the VR category or the Oculus built-in runtime reset view feature. Once you open the puzzle or menu, position drift will be nearly absent until you start moving away from your play space center again. Keep in mind not to confuse recenter view with set standing origin. Unfortunately, resetting the view doesn't get rid of this issue. It takes an origin reset. Last heads up is about the game sometimes getting jammed because of first person mode. The best example I have for this is during the Birkin fight in Leon A, when he's supposed to drop back down from above, it's simply not going to happen. You'll hear William making loud sounds akin to someone suffering from a paradoxal combination of extreme constipation and violent diarrhea but he's just not going to come down. If the game ever seems to be jammed like this, worry not, this is where our trustworthy third-person switch macro comes in. Just double tap your left stick on Oculus or press the upper right trackpad on Index and if you've been waiting for Birkin for a while, he is going to come down immediately. Once he's back down, tap that left stick twice quickly or hit that upper right trackpad again to re-enable first person. If you didn't use any controller binding, you can alternatively use the in-game RE framework menu like I did, but you're going to want to have it with the first person category pre-expanded and pre-scrolled to the enable checkbox for rapid access. Voila, we've conquered a possible game-breaking bug without even having to actually leave first person. Right now, this is OpenXR's big weakness, by the way. In this scene, you'll have to use the 2D RE framework menu method we showed earlier to toggle third person. 
You should have plenty of time to do it, but it's admittedly annoying to have to interrupt the game like this, and yes, the open VR solutions are all much better in this case. Now, the first person mode here is highly enjoyable. It's actually freaking awesome, to the point where I found myself regularly forgetting this game was originally third person. And this for extremely long bits of time. I really think it's the way to play this mod. But as I had done with Resident Evil 7, I wanted to check out if RE2 had any good seated VR modes I could try. It's always nice to have a seated classic controls alternative for those nights where you just don't want to stand and wave controllers around and would rather sit on your butt casually using the mouse and keyboard or a gamepad. In the end, I didn't quite find the same amazing setup as Resident Evil 7, but I did find an interesting alternative that I ended up liking enough to include in this video. So next we're going to look at the second way to play this game. Third person VR with decoupled camera pitch. Originally, I wanted to see if Resident Evil 2 Remake would have the same amazing seated first person VR support as Resident Evil 7 had. When I first started using RE Framework, RE7 didn't have motion control support yet with that mod, but the first person seated scheme was so goddamn good, I simply ended up finishing the main game that way. You can bet your ass if RE2 was going to offer the exact same thing, I would be interested in playing a good portion of the game with it. However, it turns out here that first person in seated mode is actually really broken with Resident Evil 2. You can check it out for yourself, just put your controllers down, sit at your desk and take control with the mouse and keyboard. You might have to wait a few seconds for RE Framework to automatically snap to seated mode when it decides you stopped using your motion controls, and you'll see what I mean. Not only does decoupled camera pitch have no effect on this mode with RE2, but on top of that, the vertical axis is aligned as if you were still in third person. It's super broken and renders this mode absolutely unusable. However, I did find a good way of playing this game seated, and we're gonna take a look at it. So before I hear things like, oh no, it's not VR unless it has motion controls and room scale, listen, I've already gone over that method and you're free to skip through this section, but honestly, I recommend you check it out anyways, because this is a nice discovery I made thanks to Resident Evil 4 Remake Demo. The third person mode RE framework offers here is about as good as the best native third person VR games like for example Hellblade VR. If you disable first person in the RE framework menu, you basically revert the game to its original state plus the amazing stereoscopic 3D output VR has to offer. There's just one setting you'll want to enable in the RE framework menu before proceeding. Make sure decoupled camera pitch is enabled under the VR category. Yep, it's that option again. See, by default, in third person, when you move the view up, the camera will rotate downward. When you move the view down, the camera will rotate upward. This will feel extra awkward with a third person camera and it's something that can build up to some motion sickness. Enabling decoupled camera pitch will eliminate the forced camera rotation, leaving you free to look up or down on your own. This sort of turns the third person mode into you sitting on a drone that you've got set to following Leon or Claire. You control the position and altitude with the mouse or right stick, but the vertical orientation is all controlled by your own head tracking. When it's time to aim, just stare at your crosshair normally and voila. I played for a few hours with this setup and even had my very first encounter with William Birkin in this mode and considering the fact that I generally suck at third person games overall, the experience was enjoyable and most of the issues I had were with my third person struggles rather than with the game or the mod itself. All in all, after I had tried RE4 Remake Demo with this configuration, I was immediately tempted to try the same with Resident Evil 2, especially after having noticed that decoupled camera pitch makes this work like one of the greatest third-person VR implementations I have seen to date. I'm going to make this as simple as possible for you. 
If you own Resident Evil 2 Remake on the PC and a VR kit that supports OpenXR or OpenVR, you must absolutely play the game with this mod. There is simply no excuse. These new Resident Evil games have amazing environments, incredible detail, breathtaking effects, and so many memorable visuals. Experiencing these in full VR with stereoscopic 3D is likely the only single way all of this should be experienced with, and if you have access to it, you should jump in as soon as possible. Yes, this goes without saying, if you have a VR kit and you're curious and are packing some good hardware to run this on, at least an RTX 2070 for really good results, I highly recommend buying this game specifically to play it in VR if you don't yet own it. While RE Framework may not have that amazing commercial product finish of the Half-Life 2 VR mod, it's still feature complete enough to turn these RE Engine games into seemingly native VR games with the full benefit of native runtime graphical performance and a massive set of retrofit features that extend into running Resident Evil 2 Remake, a natively third-person game, into a full-fledged room-scale first-person VR game. There's absolutely no way you won't find this to be some of the most satisfying VR horror you've ever experienced. I've got my small complaints with the RE Framework mods in-game menu, it's really given me hell producing my b-roll videos, but at the same time it may actually be the one and only problem I can point out. Short of lacking some polish like control instructions for the player, this tool has really accomplished miracles when it comes to running the entire modern Resident Evil saga in VR. Personally, I must say, as far as Resident Evil goes, while I am enjoying Resident Evil 2 Remake, it's simply nothing like Resident Evil 7 for me. I felt like Resident Evil 7 was far closer to being a fully VR compatible game at its roots, but more importantly the fact that it was natively first person all the way through changed the nature of the Resident Evil gameplay in a way I really liked. Some elements were a little more forgiving while other aspects like the sheer horror was far more effective. For Resident Evil 2, I'm loving the visuals and the settings. One view that is literally burned in my mind permanently is the very first moment you walk in Raccoon City, surrounded by zombies, after the crash. The scenes look compelling, everything looks real. A common thing with RE Engine games is gore, and RE2, just like its counterparts, does not fail to deliver. Disgusting skin gore physics, amazing zombie models with immense amounts of detail and intricate behaviors that make them feel real, a few interesting touches like this poor person here who evidently had an accident, possibly caused by being eaten alive by zombies resulting in an uncanny mixture <clears throat> on the floor. Resident Evil 2 also has another aspect in common to RE Engine games so far. What's with the garbage? This engine does trash good, man. In every modern Resident Evil game I tried so far, I've seen these goddamn beautiful realistic trash bags and garbage props. They all look so amazing in VR, you can almost smell them. However, RE2 does something RE7 did not. God, this game is annoying. It's, it's mainly those player-interrupting third-person cutscenes resulting from an enemy lunge. Ah, uh, why the fuck did they have to put this annoying shit in? Yeah, I know, my preferred Resident Evil RE7 has similar mechanics, but it just wasn't as fucking jarring as it is in this game. And they also had to put this shit on all the enemies. Even that two-headed crackhead Birkin pulls this shit. It's really annoying, and over time I tend to get a little fed up with it. Especially when you get a couple of cheap ones in a row, something that happens way too often. I'd say up to the point I've played, the most annoying enemy are the fucking dogs. They can lunge and interrupt you, but also they're really fucking fast so they catch up quick for that lunge. 
I admittedly haven't had quite enough time to work on them yet. I may find better tricks, but holy shit are those lunges fucking annoying. Wish the game had everything it had minus that one mechanic across the board. Just slash me when I get too close. Take my HP, but let me cunting move for Christ's sake. Anyways, as critical as that may have sounded, and while RE2 definitely isn't giving me the same amazing vibes as Resident Evil 7, I still think this game is incredible and one of the best things you can play in VR if you're looking for excellent horror. If you're more into classic Resident Evil than I am, and I am not at all into the classic series, then you're going to love this game even more than I do, and it may likely end up in your very tops as far as virtual reality horror goes. While this one isn't quite my perfect cup of tea, I can still recognize the fact that it's excellent, possibly one of the best, and I also still like it enough myself to continue my B-roll series beyond the making of this very video. I'll continue my adventure on and off as I still think there's a possibility this game's vibes could maybe turn around for me and improve. Time will tell, but all I gotta say for now is go get the game, go get the free mod, and play this for yourself. It's absolutely amazing. While I was preparing this video through the making of my B-roll series, my friend Einkro from Einkro Productions Co. was recording his entirely VR playthrough of RE2 Remake on hardcore difficulty while using his Oculus Rift S headset. He subsequently worked his ass off producing video of this playthrough with really cool retro overlays and a lot of interesting cutaways and inserts and if you made it this far in my video, I know you have time to go over there and give his playthrough a look. I'm going to link his horrifying hardcore RE2 adventures in the description of this video. Go give it a watch and keep in mind, he is doing something I just would never dare do. I'm playing this shit on regular and it has me absolutely pants shitting frozen by moments. I... I cannot be asked with this crazy ass hardcore shit. Ein Crow is doing the good lord's work, or, or, or maybe it's totally all for science. Either way, go check him out. And that's it for Resident Evil 2 Remake on Stereo 3D Productions for now. Given we can use the DirectX 11 branch of the game, it looks like we finally have a version that won't receive any game-breaking surprise updates anymore, and a version that just simply runs a lot smoother than the DirectX 12 counterparts. So updates to these instructions might not be needed for a while. I hope you all get to enjoy some crazy gory VR gameplay for yourselves. Remember, most of the gameplay you saw here was taken from the B-roll series of Resident Evil 2 featured on my second channel. The second channel is where I now post most of my Let's Play content like the Fallout VR series, Half-Life 2 VR, and others. But it's also where I do the research for videos like this. So if you want to join in on the fun, feel free to head on over to the second channel, Stereo 3D Plays, where I'll likely be working on a few new things soon, alongside the Fallout 4 VR Let's Play and all the others. Until then, you've been watching Stereo 3D Productions, and I shall see you next time. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, is that, is that fucking demon still in my house?